Stop me if you've heard this before. More evidence Canada's housing market is red hot and showing few signs of slowing. Take Vancouver. Just yesterday, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation said the average price of a home in that city will rise to $811,000 this year, an increase of 5.6% from last year. It's a trend that continues on a national level. The latest monthly housing data showed the national average resale price in September was more than $408,000, a 6% increase year over year. With higher home prices come larger mortgages. CMHC is backstopping $551 billion worth of mortgages as of the end of second quarter. The dollar value of mortgages on the CMHC's books has actually been trending lower in recent years, but a hotter market has some concern about the higher risk that comes with it. In fact, Bank of Canada Deputy Governor Lawrence Schremby recently wrote about a trend in which the government has become more exposed to the Canadian housing market via its guarantees on mortgage insurance and mortgage securitization. He added, this trend is not sustainable. Schremby said the solution is offloading more of that risk to the private sector. Here's the big picture for their take. Bill Robson, President and CEO of the C.D. Howe Institute. Armin Yalnazan, Senior Economist for the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. And Goldie Hyder, President and CEO of Hill and Knowlton Strategies. All right, I'm going to start with you, Goldie, and ask, you know, I know because I talked to the head of the CMHC that they are thinking about ways to uh, to get taxpayer risk down and, and move it over onto the private sector. And I also know that they're doing it at the behest of the government, that the federal government wants to do that. Are we now seeing an example where a deputy of the Bank of Canada is sort of doing the government's bidding as well? <laughs> Well, we know that can't be the case because they're separate. Uh, but, I, but I do think that what, uh, what you're seeing here is, a, is an attempt to try and uh, draw the private sector into this more in terms of risk sharing, which is clearly what the Bank of Canada's deputy governor said. But when you, when you digest that, what it's really saying is pass on more risk to even the customer because ultimately any additional costs that the banks are going to have to absorb through deductibles or whatever the case might be, there's no question that they're not going to eat into their profits. They're going to find a way to pass that on to the customer. And clearly that's not the intention here. There are other levers that we might get into that, that CMHC can consider. I just don't think that's one of them. One of the things that's appealing about Armin, though, and I think it's something that, uh, that, the, that Stephen Harper's government is interested in, is forcing the banks to be slightly more accountable. I and mean, Goldie makes a, a reasonable point that they may not actually eat into their own profits. We may pay for it. But it still forces them to look at the loans they're making and not have them uh, fully insured and own some of the costs of any defaults. Yeah, I can't think of a single industry that doesn't play, pay some kind of a deductible for, for when they're covered by insurance. Right. So the proposal that's out there now is for 5 to 10 percent deductible, which should in principle lower premiums. But the fact is that premiums have gone up for uh, mortgage holders in 2012, in February of this year, in May of this year. So the, the costs are going up, but defaults are going down. You know, the proportion of mortgages in arrears has been dropping consistently since 2010. It's at half the rate it was at the, at the worst part of this recession is at half the rate it was at this point in the recovery from the 1990s recession so this industry has become suddenly a lot more profitable so I guess then the question is though if defaults are following bill what are we worried about we're not do we have a great concern that taxpayers are going to be on the hook in in the event of a big housing market correction well in Canada we never had the housing bubble and pop that uh, other countries did uh, but what's happened is we were still at this elevated level when everybody else put their uh, central bank interest rates down way low and started to do everything they could to pump credit out so we've gotten carried up on that tide and uh, I do share the concern that there's a lot of leverage out there and that the taxpayers underwriting too much of it as to exactly what to do about it uh, Larry Shembury himself did not talk in his paper about deductibles and it may be that as a central banker he's aware of a, a awkward side of that particular proposal which is that banks themselves hold a lot of these things as assets we think about right. them as, on the lending side but those more those government underwritten uh, securities are, are part of their capital. They're supposedly, you know, top top uh, quality risk-free capital. If there's suddenly a deductible in that, that causes a big problem. So I don't think they'll go that way in the short run. They might end up raising the fees again and again, changing the terms, which we've seen already, which seem to take some of the steam out of the but market. Amanda, Amanda, if I can, you asked, I think, a very insightful question within your question, which is what problem is it that we're actually trying to solve mm -hmm, here? Right. I mean, today we're looking at a scenario in which there's an assumption that this is a one-size-fits-all solution to a one-size-fits-all problem. That is not the case. In fact, I point 
you today to the National Bank uh, chief economist who came out today and said, in fact, he's less concerned about Toronto and Vancouver and their hot markets and far more concerned at the reality that in Montreal, in Winnipeg, in Regina, and Saskatoon, there has been an overexposure to, to new homes and that many of them uh, sit empty. That should be a concern because that points to the economy being an indicator in terms of slowing down than anything that the mortgage rates do at this we, point. Can we have this conversation, though, and not ask the question that is getting asked uh, increasingly, and that is why the government is playing this role at all. Uh, I think insurance, uh, mortgage insurance, is a stabilizing factor in our housing market, and so probably a good thing, but why does it have to be government backstop? Why can't this be spun off and simply be a private sector mechanism? Well, if you go back to 2006, you'll remember that the reason why we got into this overexposure story is because both Genworth and AIG were given the green light by this government, the Harper government, to uh, ensure zero down 40 year, and they've been pulling, you know, they've been trying to climb back up the tree yep. on that one for years since then, and once they let Genworth and AIG do it, they had to let CMHC do it too. So this big market has meant that we have got over leverage uh, mortgages out there for the first time. We came late to that party, unlike the U.S., but it's not like we're not exposed to it. And in fact, I think part of this story is that the banks, as Bill was saying, part of this story is that banks are issuing these risky loans on the one side and playing both sides of the table by securitizing them again. But the government doesn't need to be in it. I mean, Australia is the other country that came through the crisis without a huge problem and has done all right since. And there they don't have this kind of government backstop. We got into it sort of accidentally. I mean, there's a long history history here. It starts with returning veterans after the Second World right. War. There's a whole backstory that doesn't logically lead to where we are. Uh, so I think it does make sense to try and rein it in. And the question of what instrument and how uh, is, is the critical thing, because we have a lot of strong fundamentals. Immigrants are coming in. Incomes are rising. Uh, so the longer we can just hold the line on this, the more the floor comes up and the risk of a big collapse well, disappears. Let, let's talk uh, about the other piece of this, and that is what might provoke a deputy of the Bank of Canada to be doing this research. And that is the understanding that rates will go up at some point mm -hmm. and the effect that that might have, Goldie, on those at the margin uh, with mortgages that they cannot then service. Uh, you know, Armin makes the, the very valid point that we've seen defaults come down, but maybe there's reason to believe that some of these more recently applied mortgages are in a, are in a riskier category. Do we need to worry that there's some a subtext here from yeah. our central bank? You know, uh, I, they've been saying boo so many times, nobody's scared anymore. This is a common uh, song that they've been singing for years, uh, going, dating back to Mr. Carney. And when it hasn't manifested itself in that way, people don't believe it anymore. They also know the history of interest rates. They tend to go up incrementally, quarter point at a time, and there'll be plenty of time for people to adjust. Uh, I think this is the least of our worries in an economy that right now is trapped by market access and much more fundamental issues. Uh, than the fact that consumers find confidence in the economy and are participating in it. I mean, for the numbers that we do have, I don't think there is much risk right now, but my problem is that Canada has got terrible data on who holds right. what kind of risk, what kind of vulnerability is out there, at least data that is made public. I mean, Oh, no, last word to sorry. <laughs> I'm not so much worried about a rise in interest rates, but what Goldie said about the economy more generally, if incomes are stagnating and falling, there's risk there. So right. we do need to make sure people don't get overextended. And frankly, privatizing it to Genworth and AIG for the in newcomers, because that's where the new insurance is right. taking place, that, that concerns me. You're that's exactly that. who should be protected. Well, it's government underwriting, so. Thanks to the big picture, uh, Bill Armin Goldie.